Okay, I'm going to finally get started. So I, I wanted to uh, uh, start a new project. And um, before, before I get into uh, what exact project I'm going to start, I wanted to talk about um, how I uh, came up with the idea, why I wanted to start this project, some of the research that uh, I did to, to get started, and kind of um, talk about the preparation that goes into uh, a new prop or costume that I start and how much how much time actually goes into the research phase so um, I like any costumer or prop designer I have a huge laundry list of all of the costumes and props that I want to build and so whenever I finish one I I always have to think like okay what's the next what's the next big project that I want to start and I kinda think um, about how much money I've got how much time I've got like like anyone else making costumes and um, I try and decide um, I guess there's a lot of factors that go into having me decide exactly what I want to work on and so um, what prompted me to start this next build was it was announced that Adam Savage would be attending um, FanX, the Salt Lake uh, Comic Convention, which is our uh, main comic convention that we go to. And it's, it's the event that we really look forward to every year. So when I heard that he was going to be there, I thought, well, I'm a huge fan. And I'm like, well, I really want to do something extra special with to show off to Adam Savage. And so I decided after after looking through my list of uh, of projects that I wanted to complete and looking through some of the projects that he had completed, I decided I really wanted to get started on a wearable C3PO costume, which is a crazy build. So much work is going to have to go into it. And uh, just to give you an idea of what that means, um, just starting off, I purchased, I think, 11 rolls of gold filament. I'm not going to be uh, necessarily using that specific, um, like, no one's going to actually probably see the filament color itself because I'm going to have to do a lot of finishing work. But I figure I might as well just buy gold if i got to buy any color. So I bought, like, 11, 12 rolls of filament so that I could start printing. Well, um, before I start printing, which I do want to start a print, um, I guess live here, but I wanted to show some of the stuff that uh, goes on um, behind the scenes before I get started or before I purchase anything and kind of the, the thought process that I go through before I start any build. So, um, the first thing I do is Google Drive is my best friend when it comes to starting a project. So I want to jump into uh, my computer to show um, kind of how I lay things out. Um, so anytime I start a new project, I usually have um, two, two documents. One is like a Google Docs, like Word doc type. Um, where I have all of the all of the research that I'm doing, links and everything, and I'll kind of go through how this is structured, but um, links to everything, and then I'll have once I'm once I've done all of this, then I'll go through and I will start working on uh, on a on a Google like spreadsheet, like an Excel spreadsheet. I'll start. Um, getting all of my purchases that I need to in order. Um, with this project, it was a slightly a bit different because I know that regardless, I'm going to need to buy a bunch of filament and um, I'm, al I'm already purchasing a lot of filament all the time. So I figured, well, I might as well just buy a little bit more than I usually purchase and then, and then I'll just have some on hand. So um, I guess, um, 
I want to I want to go through this real quick, and then um, and then get on to building some of the stuff about getting started on printing. So um, the first thing that I always do is I really enjoy uh, my memberships in the Star Wars costuming clubs. Um, I've I'm a member of the Mandalorian Mercs, 501st, Rebel Legion, and Droid Builders. And so I always have that in the back of my mind is, is that whatever costume I'm going to make, I it's pretty much only going to be Star Wars. There's a few rare cases where it's not, but it's always going to be Star Wars pretty much. And I want to make sure that um, it's approvable. So in this case, in most cases, I have a link to the CRL. So it's kind of funny because it seems like a lot of the a lot of the costumes that I go for have like CRLs that aren't fully fleshed out or CRLs that aren't very good or complete or yada yada yada. So this one this this is the easiest costume. It only has four parts. Chrome gold or weathered gold protocol droid armor, wires in the midsection, lower right leg should be silver. That's if you want to do this classic trilogy one. And then no expo exposed skin. So it's so vague that you have no idea what this actually means. And and I'm I'm kind of used to this. I mean, um, one of the one of the builds I did was uh, Battle Star Wars Battlefront Two uh, Inferno Squad Del Mico, and the CRL was horrible, and I I ended up um, just making it screen accurate and kind of ignoring most of the CRL, and then just worked with my local what GML to get it approved, but. Um, I imagine that this one will be, this one's kind of quite similar where I'm just going to have to kind of play it by ear, do a lot of research, do a lot, get a lot of, uh, reference photos, very specific reference photos to make sure that it's actually screen accurate and, and just kind of play it by ear on, from the CRL. So, so I usually have a link to that, whether it's useful or not. Um, interestingly enough, um, C-3PO builds have their own forum and um, that forum looks like it, it's kind of been abandoned for quite some time but I'm hoping that I can um, continue to hunt through it and find just archive posts and stuff so those are my two main resources and then um, besides those two um, main web resources I've got a bunch of videos threads of people's builds which I think are the most important thing when I'm doing a costume, I want to see how other people did it so that I don't make the same mistakes as them. And I can, I guess, just make sure everything is going to work okay for me. Um, if there are specific shop listings that I like, things that I'm interested in purchasing. And then in this case, I've got um, 3D files to print. So, um, the trickiest part of the 3PO build is printing a costume that is going to fit you and the finishing work, right? So that that's pretty much it, which, I mean, I guess I say that's pretty much it, but I, that's the hardest part, right? So um, the convenient thing, when I first got started, I uh, looked up... Um, what size uh, Anthony Daniels was, like his height and weight, and I match him. So that's the hardest part, right? Matching Anthony Daniels is the hardest part. So um, I'm safe with the size, and um, thank goodness there's someone who's designed it, the 3D files, because there's no way I would ever be able to, I mean, it would take me so long to be able to design. I mean, I could do it, but it would take me so long to be able to design actual 3D files and then print them. It's just an insane amount of work. So um, there's this person named Jesse M on Thingiverse, and he's got pretty much all the parts 
and they're all designed to be um, a costume. So that was, I mean, this is really the only reason why I can do this costume. Otherwise, I, I would be, ha like, I'd have to buy uh, full costumes and stuff. So, I mean, here you can see on my shop listings, there's a full costume for over $1,000. Not too excited about spending that much money. Just like everyone else who does costuming, um, we just have to save up a ton and then blow all of our money and then build it and then you just start the saving all over again. So um, the other thing that I, I uh, looked into, I've got, I've got a lot, I found a lot of videos. There's a, a, a really amazing maker, uh, Gordon Tarpley, who has done um, several 3PO builds and he um, specifically built Adam Savage's 3PO. And so I, it kind of like came full circle where I wanted to do a 3PO costume because I was going to meet Adam Savage. And then I just happened to find um, a lot of the build videos for the person who made Adam Savage's, um, who made Adam, Adam Savage's uh, 3PO um, costume. Let's see. Oh, I'm glad you love the credits and the Sabak deck. Um, if you're curious, I just put up a couple new listings. Um, one for an Imperial credit set and one for a, um, a uh, like, octagonal set. Let, let, me, let me grab it real quick. So here's the, uh, one of the octagonal ones. And then here's one of the uh, Imperial ones. So, yeah. Um, they These have already gotten a lot of love. A lot of people are really liking these. And I, I'm, I, I really love the way they look, especially this uh, 7 credit. It looks really, really smooth. My, my printer did an excellent job on this print. So, yeah. Um, anyway, okay, back to, back to the build. So... Um, I guess with this, I want to um, jump into a few of the things I learned while I was doing some of this research, and then I want to uh, prepare the first 3PO print and get it printing, and and then we'll uh, hopefully it, everything works fine. So um, first off, in order to make sure that the 3D files that um, that I that I found these Jesse M files in order to, to to know if they actually were Anthony Daniels size, which would be my size, I printed out um, a piece of the back of the head. So if I open up the head, I printed out um, just this edge right here, this back section, and I only printed it maybe a half a millimeter. I printed it like such a, th there's like paper thin. And then I just draped it over my head, kind of like these headphones are right now. I just kind of draped them over my head and, and then measured it. And I was like, well, if I tuck in my ears a little bit, they might be a little squished, but it looked like it's going to fit perfectly. Now, knowing my luck and, and how costumes work in general, I'm, I know I'm going to end up printing the first piece. I'm going to stick it on. Well, I'm going to try to stick it on my head and it's not going to work at all more than likely. But I, I feel like if that's the case, well, I've done my due diligence. I really tried to make it, make sure that it was going to fit and it didn't. So what can you do? I mean, that's, that's the world of 3d printing where you, you do all your research and measuring and everything and you print it and something goes wrong, whether the printer explodes or, I mean, there's so many things that go, can go wrong. And so um, I'm, I'm just going to start the print. It's a long print and then go from there. So um, uh, f I guess the first thing I want to do then is I want to... Um, well, I'll, I'll just download this right here just so it's easier to do. And then I will um, pull up uh, Cura, which I use for all of my slicing. 
and get going slicing this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I want to print the back of the head first and get that going. So okay <laughs> yeah I definitely I don't know how I'm going to uh, keep cool in this costume I mean I mean I, I guess it can't be it can't be too much worse than than other armored costumes right I mean like I guess I'm going to have the waist the waist is going to be open and by open, I mean I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have uh, like a a thin black suit, like a I don't I can't remember what they're called, um, just like a, a um, just like a thin black suit with with the wires over it. So my waist will be completely open. So I'm hoping I can get a lot of airflow in through the waist. But other than that, it's pretty sealed. I guess I do have a mouth hole, so hopefully I can get enough airflow in and out to where I'm not just burning up. I don't know. There's not, there's no room for fans. Like in most, in most helmeted costumes, there's room for fans. So like in my Mandalorian or even my, uh, Inferno squad costume, I can, I can install fans and I've used fans, but yeah, there's no room for fans and there's electronics. Like the eyes are lit up. So there's going to be a little bit of heat. I've got to use LEDs for sure. That's the only way. Is, is to use uh, LEDs otherwise otherwise I'm just gonna completely roast okay so here is the back of the head and um, I'll show you a few different things um, and we can kinda play around with oh why is this not snapping I definitely wanna snap it um, oh yeah now it's gonna be all messed up okay um, I'll show you a few different things and try try out a few different things. So if I just slice it right here, um, how long is it going to take? Three days? Two days maybe printing? Let's see. Two days, five hours. Okay. And that's probably with a bunch of support material. Let's look. Okay, yeah. No, there, there's not a ton. Okay. So one thing I would really love to be able to do is print this without any support material. Just because if I can if I can remove if I can remove the support material, it's gonna save me so much I mean time as well as just money from filament. So I mean already the amount I'm spent, like the, the amount I'm putting in right here, um, I'm putting in almost half of a roll of filament, right? So almost an almost half a roll, and that's just half of the head. So probably the entire head's going to be an entire roll of filament. So it 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 this costume eats up filament so so quickly. So um, I. I want to look at what the uh, what the um, the slope is, what 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 percentage of the slope is, and see if I can get away with not having any support material. So this is the part where it gets tricky up here. And if I if I bring it down a few layers. Yeah, to right here. So if it doesn't have the support material, it it could it'll just start kind of printing in thin air, and it's kind of a gamble to whether or not it will actually fix itself. Uh, there's a lot of times where I've done prints and just like crossed my fingers, and and it's worked out. Um, let, let me sh let me show you a, a piece of a print, well, a, a little small print that that you can see the same principle. Uh, 
Okay, let's switch to this uh, other webcam real quick and see if there's... Oh, it's so blurry. No, I can't, I can't get it, uh, I can't get it to clear up. Okay, so um, this piece right here is a, is a little greebly piece that's for uh, Del Mico and Gideon Hask from uh, Battlefront. And um, this I designed to be printed without any support material because I've got these, uh, these notches that will act as like faux support material. But if you could see at the top of there, the, the very first layer of that top part isn't, isn't um, it, it just uh, half of it's kind of printing in thin air. And so it doesn't look perfect, but um, the first layer kind of goes down rough. And then from there, it just builds up and then it's, and then it's perfectly clear, like no problems. Well, let's try this webcam. See if I can get, no, it's. It's still a little too dark, but yeah. So, so it it works. It can work really well, or it can just fail. Like, I mean, the worst case scenario is if I if I try and get it to work and it just fails right here at the end, because then I'm left with a couple dilemmas. Either I've got to print the whole thing over again, or I've got to figure out exactly where it failed. And then, like, um, move the model down. In fact, I'll just show you. So if it failed right there, what I would end up doing is I'd take this model and push it below the surface. And then, and then I'd slice it from there. And then I'd just print that top, glue it on, Bondo, a bunch of filler primer, sanding, all of that kind of stuff, right? And then doing the process several times, more filler primer slash Bondo, more sanding until, until it looked acceptable, right? Until there's, there's no, uh, no bumps or anything. And that, that's another thing with this costume. Like the finish has to be perfect because it has to mimic metal flawlessly. So like all of the prints are going to have to be completely completely taken down completely sanded down and I've got a few ideas for that which uh, which I'll show off in just a minute while probably while I'm waiting for the printer to heat up and things to start going so um, I guess let's um, let me let let me talk about um, what printer I'm printing on because uh, I'm I'm sure that um, people are curious of um, what printer this is or other printers I've got. So um, right now I've got um, one, two, three, four. I've got six printers, six 3D printers. I've got um, four Ender 3s, and you can see one of the Ender 3s right here. I've got one out here, um, and then I've got three in my office closet. And then I've got two CR 10 S's, which give me the larger print volume, which is this printer right here is, is uh, one of my CR 10 S's. So uh, in order to do this print, you've got to have a bigger printer. Um, otherwise, I mean, I, I guess you technically could do it on a smaller printer, but I mean, that's just so much more gluing so many more parts where the like so many more sections where, where the part can just break because there's just um, more um, pieces welded together, glued together. It's just, it's scary for me to print something this big because I already know how brittle 3D prints are on like large thin scales. And so um, it's, it's, it's already just such a gamble to try and, and do this. So, okay. Let, let, let's, uh, let me pull up my, um, um, my support settings and play around with, with, um, the support material. So, okay. Um, okay. 
have to re-slice it, and then I'll get <clears throat> get all of my settings here. Yes, morph suit. That's what it's called. Definitely going to have a black morph suit underneath. I think that's going to be the easiest way. And I think it'll help make it so my skin doesn't get, like, rubbed against all the time. I mean, if you've ever worn a costume for any length of time, after the first troop or first time you wear it, it's very clear where you've where you haven't got gotten your costume to fit just perfectly because it'll be like super red, super sore by the end, and then you know where you've got to fix. Okay. Okay, there we go. So right now, let's go down to the first layer. Right now I've got it set up so that it's got a brim count of 10, which if I do have support material, I want to make sure that it stays. Like this right here is like this hunk of support material you'll see. This is just going to fall off. This is just garbage. Waste of filament. So I need to get rid of that and then change the angle so that we can get this printing and then talk about how to finish it, right? Okay, so let's look at, I don't know why Akira keeps kind of freaking out, keeps flashing different colors for me, like red randomly, I don't know why. Okay. Hey, yeah, uh, thanks for stopping by. I, I, I appreciate you stopping by and, and chatting. Have a good night and stay healthy yourself. Let's see. There we go. select this area and hopefully I can block that support that was there see how far it was over if it's gonna process Hmm. Well, while it's processing, um, I want to I'll pull up um, some of the ideas I have for um, finishing it to where it can just be hopefully super shiny and and not have any like 3D printed lines or anything like that. So um, what I've purchased and I didn't purchase. Um, I didn't purchase this gallon one. I purchased, uh, I think, two packs of the smaller one. Is some XTC 3D, which hopefully I, I purchased uh, two of these 24 ounce packs, and it's supposed to cover a huge area. And basically, what it does is you mix the A and B parts, and then you've got about four hours to get a paintbrush and kind of paint it all on and you can kind of see like here in this little skull they've got going you can see um, how how much um, I guess w w what the process looks like so it takes apparently a really small amount to coat the 3d print and then once the 3d print is coated um, it it's like a, a what's it called a um, a resin it's like a resin that goes over the 3d print and it's supposed to make it a ton more durable and um, just 
really clear it up, um, clear up all of the printing lines so that, um, clear up all the printing lines so that you can easily just, uh, just do a really quick light sanding and then you can start doing, you could maybe even skip uh, like using a filler primer. I'm really hoping I can do that. Um, that's going to save me a ton of time if I can just completely skip, skip using a filler primer. Um, if I can just go on to just brushing the, the, um, brushing the print with the XTC 3D and then go straight on to a really like a really light sanding and then start doing my paints and then, and then doing like wet sanding to, to like really make it, I guess, make it sh really make it shine. Right. So I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to, how I'm going to get it to be super shiny yet. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print maybe six to 10, like squares, maybe like small squares of, um, of just the exact same filament I'm going to use. And then I'm going to put the XTC 3D on all these 10 squares. And then I'm just going to try like 10 different methods to make it look as shiny as possible without going to an expensive route. So I guess what I mean by an expensive route is like um, where you, um, I can't remember what the process is called, where you um, you put like a base um, metal powder on it and then you um, uh, use like a, I can't remember what they're called, like a, I, I can't remember if it's a chemical reaction or a magnetic where you're um, just uh, recoding the whole thing in a separate metal to give it um, its like gold shine. So I would really prefer to avoid having to do that because I really don't want to um, have to invest in some new hardware or like any kind of actual metals. What I'm hoping that I can do is that some form of um, chrome from a from a airbrush, like chrome, like really like chroming it up and then doing like a yellow tint or like a gold tint on the chrome. I mean, I've already got to paint like the leg chrome itself. So if I if I just can chrome the whole thing, or I guess another possibility is going to be something like um, a rub and buff. But I guess once I figure out what's going to look the best, like paint or covering wise, then I've got to figure that I've got to buy a bunch of clear coats to where I can protect the gold color and the chrome color and not um, make it look really dull. So to give you an example, I've got um, my, my, one of my uh, props, I've got a replica um, Obi-Wan Kenobi lightsaber from um, Revenge of the Sith. And I loved the way the rub and buff looked. And I, I finished that 3D print completely with the rub and buff. And it looks so good. And then I... Then I used like a gloss clear coat on it and it looks horrible. Oh, it looks so bad. It, it pains me to this day that, that it went from so good to so bad. And I haven't, I haven't touched it since. Cause I'm just like, uh, I really don't want to like, it looks so good. I, uh, it, it pains me that it looked so good. So, um, I'm going to have to go through and, and mess with it and, try and and fix it all and everything like that's the that's the only way to do it so so if I end up doing the exact same thing where I where I get in and I want to use rub and buff then I've got to go I've, I've got to buy a bunch of possible clear coats and really test what's going to look the best so 
Um, okay, let me pull up. Um, let me pull up Cura again, and. <clears throat> and get this processing again and get this printing. Let me move my memory card over. Okay, let's slice it again. So if, if anyone's familiar with 3D printing, a lot of people, and I myself have used in the past a, um, a program and a functionality called OctoPrint, where you um, pretty much uh, um, hook up a Raspberry Pi or a simple single board computer to your 3D printer, and then you can wirelessly send 3D files to be printed almost instantly. And... Um, I, I had that on my, th on one of my 3d printers and enjoyed it for a little bit. And then I just ran into a lot of problems. Like anytime there's a power outage, then all of the functionality of the printer that I purchased kind of just was useless. Like if the printer runs out of filament, it stops. And with raspberry Pi, it just kept going. Or if the, if the power ran out, then um, if with the Raspberry Pi, it would just kill the print, and then with with um, with my actual printer, if the power goes out, yeah, I can just click resume when the power gets back on. And so um, I've kind of decided that the pros of having the Raspberry Pi definitely do not outweigh the cons, and so I have to swap micro SD cards back and forth now, which is a little bit annoying, but you get used to it. Um, I don't know why this isn't... Oh, it looks like it's frozen. Hmm. Okay, I'll just start it up real quick. And then drop that file back in. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn off support. I really don't want, I, th I thought about, it's going to take too much time to mess around with, with deleting individual pieces of support that I think I'm just going to turn off support and cross my fingers. So without the support, I mean with the support, it it was slated to take two days and five hours and 485 grams of filament so I'm just gonna process it as is yeah I guess I forgot to turn off support okay turn off for support real quick then process it and see how much filament and time I can save because especially with this first one I I don't even know if it's going to be the right size when I get it to work. So one day in eight hours. Holy cow. Yeah. I save a day without doing the filament. Okay. That's great. And almost half the filament. Okay. I, that doesn't seem like it's really an option that I, it's like if it fails, it's nowhere near as horrible as if it failed with the other one. And it's a slow, gradual incline. So in theory, it should be just fine. Like, this is the part where it's going to get really sketchy, though. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Like, here, up to here is no problem at all. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 524. 
526. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Now I'm kind of I'm kind of torn on what to do. Let's not look at the speed. I'm gonna look at support. I mean, maybe if I maybe if I do like eighty percent overhang. Let's try that. And maybe that's maybe that's the middle ground. Maybe I just do eighty percent. That cuts off because it was at sixty. It cuts off twenty percent, and maybe I can find this middle ground of. It's not going to take too long, but it's going to not fail. I mean, that's, I mean, that's an extra like what was it, ten hours more? Yeah, I think that's going to be the best bet. Okay. I'll just rename this. Okay, so that's my layer one right there. Okay, let's kick this out. Get the printer warming up, and then I'll swap to my printer cam, and we can watch the first layer go down. Okay, heating up now. Um, so, one thing I like to do with these larger prints is well, I guess even the smaller prints, I really like to um, watch the first, especially the first layer go down. And while it's going down, I'm constantly um, just doing like real-time leveling of the bed. So if you're not very familiar with how a 3D printer works, you've got, you've got a bed that it prints on, right? And let, me, let me just swap to this main camera. So you've got a bed that it prints on, and if that bed isn't perfectly flat, then um, parts of the print aren't going to stick correctly, and it's maybe it's going to try and print like where part of it's like off the ground. And what it's going to do, it's what's going to do one of a few things. One of the most common things that I run into is that um, because it's not squished in into the bed enough, it doesn't stick. And so slowly over time, the print warps up as it's printing. So, um, so what I like to do is real time, while, while it's actually printing, I like to go in and adjust the leveling knobs so that it can be just perfectly level and then um, I'll kind of know for sure that that it's not gonna that it's not just going to um, die halfway through because it wasn't level because that's it's really the worst feeling in the world when when you've spent so much time doing all the research getting the print ready and and then in a in a large print like this where it's a one day in 18 hours that um, that it just it dies for for a reason that could have easily been avoided if, if you just took an extra 10 minutes or even five minutes in many cases so um, I just pulled up the, the 3d printer we're just we um, I'm just about done heating the bed and then um, We'll, we'll watch the first layer go down and then and then call it a night. I'm really hoping if 
if I can if I can get this first one to go well, then that's going to really set the stage for the rest of them. I'll have a really good idea that, for example, 80% is a re is going to work for me. Um, I'm also going to have a really good idea because if if this back headpiece fits me, then I'm just going to I'm I'm going to be more able to assume that the rest of the parts are going to fit with little to no problems, right? Okay, about halfway done heating the nozzle, and we'll start printing. So this one is really crucial, and I guess many times that I that I do a big project like this, I end up having to redo the first one multiple times. And as you might imagine, when you're starting a new uh, a new a new costume and a, or a new prop. Like if you have a bunch of failures right at the beginning, then it doesn't um, motivate you very much. And so I, I really want to take the extra time. And that's why I put in a ton of research and haven't started this until now is because I really want to get these first things done right. So that way I don't have to redo them. That's, that's one thing. Um, I notice as a common thread amongst all of the the build threads that people were um, having uh, with with their like not only just three D printed three PO costumes but three PO costumes in general is that they would get going down one chain one path and then they'd realize halfway through that like it wasn't sized correctly or there was something wrong and then they just had to start over and this is a painful like costume to start over because I mean printing alone it's going to be probably like I'm guessing two weeks to a month of printing just straight and so if any of that has to be redone then it's just going to add extra time where I can't be finishing the prop or or um, like sanding and like there's because there's there's so much that goes into it um, okay, <clears throat> should be starting in just a few seconds. There we go. And we can watch the first layer go down. And I'll, I'll, uh, jump over here and do a little bit of live leveling. So it's spitting out a first line of filament, um, just to clean out the nozzle, make sure it's uh, clean with the correct color. I'm good to go. Okay. Okay, so far this, so right now it's printing the, uh, this middle um, support section. It's, it's squished enough, it, it looks pretty good. It could be squished maybe a little bit more. And so I might end up, um, I might end up uh, raising the bed like really, really slightly. But it's looking pretty good, so. Um, what I'm going to do then, um, in between um, live streaming and videos of of uh, the build process, I'll I'll be uh, kind of constantly taking photos and and just posting it on our, on our Instagram so everybody can see the progress. Um, there's been so, so like little documentation about 3PO builds that I really want to, um, figure out all the problems and make it a lot more accessible to people because 3D printers are, are so, uh, they're, they're cheaper than they've ever been before. They're easier than they've ever been, um, before to use. And so I think a lot more people would be willing to do it if they had like some sort of decent tutorial 
or I guess any kind of resources. Like right now, really the only resources are really old resources that have nothing to do with 3D printing it. They're like cast from uh, a statue, like rotocast from a statue. And so um, I think in many circumstances it doesn't uh, circumstances it doesn't apply to people who want to use the who want to build the costume now. So I'm really hoping that like through the documentation process, I can really make the costume more available to people. And hopefully I can make it easily enough that it doesn't intimidate as many people because I know that there's, there's so many R2D2s out there. And even in our local like um, uh, garrison and everything, we've got an R2 that's in my like really small city. We've got an R2 and and um it's it like just makes it so much more real for for kids or heck even adults if if um you've got a 3PO and an R2 and you can do like some of the banter back and forth i mean it's the banter's all on the 3PO side but but the as long as the droid builder is like doing the beeps and boops at the right time you can really have a banter and it can bring to life the character so much more which that's another thing i've got to figure i've got to figure out i've got to figure out how to act like anthony daniels i haven't also decided if i want to do a sound glove because that's something that that we do that we do sell is the sound gloves and so i've got like sound gloves on hand I've, i could use like a 16 sound effect sound glove where I'm pressing buttons. I still don't know how I would press the buttons. Like there's so many problems, but I haven't decided if I want to do the sound effects or try and mimic Anthony Daniels voice and do like a British accent and figure out how he does like the robot Butler style of talking. Like that's going to be, I probably like if I want to do the voice acting, that's something I've got to probably start really soon and start practicing it. So I actually sound decent. Otherwise, I don't, I'm not going to be able to um, hold up in in any kind of conversation with any kind of ch child or anything. So it's going to be, yeah, that's going to be quite the uh, quite the project. Like just that part, just like the mannerisms and the acting. Uh, I might have to watch Star Wars like a hundred more times and chalk it up to some research for the costume so I can figure out how he acts. I don't know. Um, let, let's. Let me look over here real quick, see how we're doing. Okay, so you'll notice at the top here, it uh, looks a little looks a little weird and that's because it was a little bit too squished and so the filament wasn't able to like come out all the way and so um, what I did was I lowered the bed slightly so hopefully uh, the next layers with the first layer um, if it's really squished then the second layer will just kind of fill the gap and the nice thing is is this edge if I if I switch back to to uh, my computer real quick this edge that's printing first is is just um, the part that that, that uh, encases the. Um, oh, I take that back. Part well, part of it is the part that encases the the head. Some of it is um, this uh, these. I don't know what these parts are. Some of these like rectangles right here and the circle. Those will be view viewable if I pull up. Yeah, but but the rest of it, whether it's ugly or not, it's not going to make too much of a difference because um, it's going to be hidden. But but kind of like I've said in the past earlier, regardless, I'm going to have to sand it and prime it and sand it and prime it a thousand times regardless. So it's not going to make too big of a difference if if. Um, if it's kind of ugly on the first go because there's already going to be so much work that's going to have to go into it. So 
it looks like everything's going down fine. Well, let me swap the camera back. Look like it looks like it's all going down fine. So hopefully, well, so right now it's 10:15 my time. So um, I'm gonna, I'll obviously watch it for probably an hour before I go to bed, and then after that I'm just gonna let it go overnight, and then. Altogether, it's going to take a day and 18 hours. So that means it'll be um, tomorrow night at 10, my time, and then another 18 hours off of that. So um, almost, so like mid, I mean like l mid to late evening in two days. So... Um, what, what I'll be doing is, uh, once it's done, I'll post, I'll post some, some photos on Instagram and, and hopefully, hopefully it actually looks good. Okay. Um, thanks for everybody for stopping by. Um, cross your fingers for me so that we can, uh, I can hopefully get this first print done, and and hopefully hopefully the the next um, the next photo you see is me with the back of the head on smiling, so because it all worked perfectly and nothing went wrong. Um, uh, I guess uh, one other thing before I end the stream is um, this is not the format that's going to be here most of the time most of the time I'm going to be um, out in my garage on my workbench I've got a, a, a computer set up there that I'm hoping to stream from where I'm actually going to be hands-on working on on props and working on projects um, and probably I'll be streaming a lot of sanding and a lot of uh, chatting about Star Wars so um, this is going to be more of an oddball one where I'm at my computer desk in my office. Um, so hopefully um, I can get my other computer running well enough to to stream some of the process. And then I, I, I want to start doing um, like um, painting, like what things I'm – props that I'm currently painting or finishing – and then I was also kind of thinking of maybe um, new things I'm designing in Fusion 360, like doing some 3D design stuff, showing um, me designing um, and kind of go from finding the reference, finding like reference materials and then taking it from like an in-game model or a reference pictures from a movie and then 3d modeling it and then printing it and then finishing it doing like a whole um like the whole thing from start to end so um i've got a, a lot of fun ideas and and i'm hoping that uh that i guess what, kind of what i said earlier that i can just document some of this stuff and make it more accessible to people i think that it will uh i guess especially now that we're all kind of stuck at home i think it'll um, hopefully motivate people to maybe not even work on the costumes I'm working on, but, but work on other costumes, even though we don't necessarily have, um, troops or comic conventions or I guess real reasons to be or goals. I mean, this whole project's based around the premise that, um, the Salt Lake Fan X Comic Con is not going to get canceled and I can meet Adam Savage and show off my 3PO skills, but yeah, we, we, we'll see. So uh, thanks everybody for watching. Have a good night. For, for me, it's night. Have a good night, day. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, have fun, and uh, start working on a prop. Use this as your motivation to, to start working. Thanks.